morning. Um, there, there we are. Okay. So we are on Instagram and Facebook with Bonnie Bruder from Binge Networks. Hey, Bonnie. Hi. Hey, guys. Nice to see you all. Thanks for being up and awake and showered and makeup and everything at this point. Oh, my God. Impressive. I've been up for like 17 hours already. I have two of babies. Course. <laughs> of course. And that's exactly what I want to talk to you about. <laughs> I uh, was so fascinated. I'm we're, Bonnie and I are going to get make a big uh, announcement later about Mom Cave. And we're going to talk about Bonnie's business. But the most fascinating thing to me is not about business. It's about when I heard that Bunny had adopted two babies, newborn babies, since the pandemic. And she's running a business and she's here talking to us. So <laughs> you're the super mama and we want to hear Aww. all about it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, t tell me, start from the beginning. How um, I know that adoption can take a long time and be really tricky. I have lots of friends who've gone through it. My best friend, my best cousin is adopted. Um, was it a long process? It was a very arduous, horrible, and very long process. Yeah. yeah. In total, it took about eight years. Um, wow. Obviously, that's not what we're here to talk about today. We can do a whole show on that. But yes, it took yes. a very, very long time. Um, I have a whole other blog called DisruptedMama.com on that whole topic. So, Oh, wow. That's yeah. awesome. I did not know about that. So we're going to put that in the comments. You never told me. I want to know about Disrupted Mama. Um, yeah. Okay. And so you, uh, nobody was prepared for the pandemic to hit, right? Correct. Um, it surprised us all. But let's just go back to like the day before we knew the crap was going to hit the fan, as <laughs> I call it. At that point, did you know you were adopting? Or did you know it was going to happen? Yes. Oh, my God. I'm getting chills because it's I'm so sorry. exciting to think about that. So here I was in Georgia. I was living in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I would had a horrible road up to adoption. So I was cautious uh, yes. as, or let's call it traumatized about mm -hmm. what was going to happen and i was waiting for my daughter who i was going to adopt to be born in st petersburg florida so as i'm watching cnn with the rest of the world and then yeah. talking to my family who's in california and they're already on lockdowns i'm realizing there's something about to happen and i need to get myself to the next state over because if i can't get to florida i can't get my baby yeah. So I pack up the car with the dog and book the Hilton in St. Petersburg. And that was my home for the next nine days, um, awaiting Olive. And true to my daughter's little sassy personality, um, she gave us two false alarms. So oh. once we were in the hospital for 42 hours with the birth mom, um, no baby. They let us go home. The next time, uh, seven hours. No baby. You guys can go Oh, home. my goodness. And then the third time, I'd already moved into an Airbnb because the whole pandemic was really shaping up to be something, and I didn't want to be in a hotel. Sure. And so I booked an Airbnb here in St. Petersburg, and along came baby Olive on March 22nd. And wow. the lockdowns happened, I think, the 22nd as well. So by <laughs> the time we left the hospital, I was with um, – with my little baby girl, I took her to the Airbnb and we weren't allowed to leave the state. So, <laughs> oh my goodness, that's what happened. What amazing timing. Um, we're just getting some comments of good morning from EJ. She watches all of our good lives. Morning. She's awesome. Don uh, is saying hi, Bonnie, over on Instagram. That story gave me chills as well because having a new baby come into your family, come into your daily life is so disruptive. Yeah. exciting and wonderful but terrifying and then you are also like seeing that the world is shutting down and what's yeah. what's going to happen um so how long did you stay in florida before you were able to go back home oh uh i can look out the window and see my airbnb <laughs> <laughs> so i'm still here two oh, years later you. okay okay literally wow. right across the street it's called the yellow submarine um that's and cute that's where I stayed for four months. And so I had a car seat, a pacifier, a bottle, and a bassinet. Oh, and a boppy to put boppy. her in. And yeah. that was it because I was planning on being here a week. And sure. thankfully, a friend was stranded too. And I had, oh, come to our Airbnb. We have three rooms. So I had a little bit of help. 
so good. Um, but I stayed there for four months and partially like initially it was because of necessity. I wasn't allowed to leave the state uh, mm -hmm. There's something called ICPC, which is interstate adoptions. And of course everything was shut down, so they couldn't clear that. Oh, but man. once I could, I lived in a high rise in Georgia and I wasn't going to take a newborn, you know, in with this whole if we yes. all can remember how scary the virus was in the beginning. So um, I just kept re-upping and talked to the owners and they'd shut down Airbnb. So they were happy to have a renter. I bet. We went offline and one thing led to another. And I saw this house being built that we're in right now across the street and I ended up buying it. I just thought, my daughter wants to live here. She, you know, she did a strong entry <laughs> for three tries. <laughs> yes. And, um, and so we ended up buying the house across the street. It was a brand new build. As soon as it was finished, we moved in. And um, that was, yeah, that's been our story. We met, oh you know, I knew nobody except for my one friend. And then one thing led to another. And we started to meet all of these other mamas. And it's been a really great experience. Yeah. Um, the, the finding of the new mom friends, I found it was a struggle at first, but once you do, then you have somebody to talk, bounce your ideas off of and somebody that yeah. understands what you're going through. That's great. And it's, I mean, it's like almost fortuitous that you see this house being built and now you're in the house. Yeah. I mean, the funny thing was, is we had nothing to do because it was a pandemic. So at night we would put the baby in the car seat and just drive around mm -hmm. and look at houses for sale for fun, you know, just like, yeah. what else are you going to do? Right. And just pull it up on Zillow and do the little tour. And then my friend would <laughs> say, you know, you really should buy a house here. It's a great opportunity. Oh, no, 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 no. The second I can leave, I'm going home. And, um, and then at night, we would pull the chairs out onto the front porch and have some wine and look at this house. And we would just comment like Muppets, like, you know, the two guys in the Muppets, we yes. would just comment on the build across the street. We're like, nice. oh, they did the yard today. Oh, they've tilled the soil. Oh, you know, because again, nothing else to do during lockdown. And no. so, yeah, it's really crazy that I live here <laughs> because I comment, I did the commentary on the whole build and yeah. now it's That's mine. So, cool. so That's it's so fun. Cool. That's fun. I, I feel like children also help teach us that life never goes the way that we plan yeah. and whatever you do plan, it's, it's probably not what was meant to be or as good as what ends up being yeah um you know i know my my life is certainly nothing like i planned and i was a big planner so <laughs> i've uh, learned not to plan yeah um, we have a, someone on instagram had a comment you literally changed your life through the gift of a baby through the bad look at the good you were given what a story oh yeah. <laughs> thank Sweet. you so much pixie jules so yeah it's very true i mean i i I'm very spiritual and I know if anyone reads Disrupted Mala, you'll be shocked at what I had to go through to get to my baby Olive. But looking back, I'm glad that things happened the way they happened and that it took eight more years than I had planned because the pieces did fall into place. And, right. you know, I never would have had a home before, been in a position, even just the pandemic shutting down. You know, we had offices in New York, Miami, Atlanta, shutting that all down and immediately going remote all of the pieces of the puzzle fell into place and it all yeah. needed to be that way. And there's more to the story that you'll hear in a second. So <laughs> totally, totally. Um, yeah. The, the waiting eight years for a baby, I know that must've been excruciating, but I, I sometimes get criticized for saying this. Um, I think if you have to struggle in some way or wait or yearn in some way before you become a parent in a way, that's really good for you. Because oh thousand percent at least agree. it was for me. Because if you um if 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 it was easy to get the baby, when <laughs> you have the baby and for the rest of the child's life, parenting is so not easy. And there yes. are so many times that that I just am so frustrated and like what is happening? I'm failing, what am I doing? And and then I think back of like if I could talk to that self who yearned yeah. and had heartbreak and loss and everything before I got to this baby, like, I don't know, it gives me perspective of, I so, want this so badly. So happy you said that. You know, it's funny, we just went through a period, I'm sure every mom on here can relate. Uh, we had norovirus that led straight into COVID that went into ear infection. Oh. And so we were, oh, prior to that, my daughter had fallen and uh, fractured her orbit orbital skull. So we were quarantining for two weeks for that. So she didn't get any sicknesses. Yeah. Then we went straight into that. So we'd been home for like five weeks. 
And yeah. it's rough, you know, when you're being, you're sick yourself, you're being puked on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I just remember thinking, like, when I thought I'd hit my max of thinking, I just took a breath and I was like, oh, my God, remember the pain of how badly I wanted these children before yes. I had them. And it yes. just put me in a place of, like, this will pass. We'll be back at the park soon. Right. But that pain of desiring, wanting, yearning for a child is so awful that is. this is okay. <laughs> you know, this is fine. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It helps a lot. And so then Olive got, is it a sister? You have a brother. Two, a brother. <laughs> so Olive has a brother. Yes. Also during the pandemic, because yes. we're basically still in the pandemic, I guess. <laughs> but um, within a short amount of time is my point. And um, can you share anything about how Olive's brother came into the picture? So this is baby Phoenix. <laughs> oh, how sweet. Oh, he's so cute. So we move into the house. Uh, I think a week or two goes by and I get a call from the adoption agency. And we had just that week finalized with the judge, all of Olive's, um, you know, the final adoption piece. Mm -hmm. So the agency calls, it's a Friday afternoon. I remember because my friend, I was following him to U-Haul. We were out running errands and I, I get the call and you're always, when you're adopting, you're always on pins and needles because things always go wrong. Things always fall through. There's always scams, or all this yeah. stuff. So I'm like, oh, what, you know what happened? No, 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 relax. They're not calling because of Olive. They're like, we actually have something else we need to run by you. <laughs> okay. And long story short, they said, um, her birth mother may be reaching out to you. She is pregnant and she wants you to have the baby. Wow. What do you think? And I'm like trying to, I'm in the turn lane. I'm like, I think I'm going to pull over. <laughs> Mind blown. I'm going to run into something. If Oh my so, God. Mind you, I'm a new mom 11 weeks in by myself. It's a pandemic. Only 11 weeks. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I bought a house. I'm living in a different state. I'm trying to manage my company, work remote, you know, with my baby on my chest as I'm doing yep. all my calls. And I'm like, okay. So I, I said, wow, you know, this is a lot of information. Can I have the weekend to think about it? And they're like, absolutely, take your time, but get back to us right away. But what do you think? You know, they're always like pushing. Yeah, yeah, yeah but give us an idea. Take your time, but what do you think you're going to say? You know, mm -hmm. and I'm like, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, you right. know, I said initially, like, I'm excited for this call, but like, I need to process all this. So go home, talk it over with my friend. It was Long story short, it was the hardest decision I ever made because I'd gone through so much to get to a baby and here this was falling in my plate, on my plate, and I was never ever going to try again based on what I had gone through and the fact that they would have been siblings. It was just a lot of kismet and then I had an extra room in my house. <laughs> I was like, that's weird. Wow. We bought an extra bedroom, you know, a four bedroom mm -hmm. house. Um, so I thought long and hard and had to go forward. You know, I'm, a, I'm never a shy away from hard person. So I was like, okay, I can, I'll figure it out. I figured her out. She fortunately was a very easy baby. He was not. He rode in on like a wild bull and mm. kept riding for four months of just screaming and crying. And, but, you know, I, I did it. I'm so grateful. They're turning one and two. So they're one weeks apart. Wow. Um, oh, my gosh. During his birth, he was he had some troubles breathing early on, and so they put him in the NICU. And I literally had to leave the NICU to come home to do her waffle birthday party, and you know her one year birthday, yeah. and then go back. And then he came home the next day. So wow. he came back when she was one year and one day. You know, I introduced. Oh, hey, I have one more present for you. <laughs> yeah. Big present. And when, 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 when she's like ten or eleven, she's not going to think it's as much of a present. She's going. <laughs> When they start fighting. Yeah, it's funny because, yeah. you know, any mom that has two, it breaks your heart all over because you're like giving them the best gift in the world. But also it is. It is. It's like every attention you take away from one, it's just the guilt and the, and I just, now that I look at him who's one, I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that to you. You're so little. But they're yeah. so cute and sweet together. And it's really That's fun so to great. see. Yeah. It's been a crazy journey. Crazy I year. I can't imagine. Uh, Megan is commenting. Good morning. Hi, Megan. I'm not really Hi, watching Megan. the comments the way I should because I'm fascinated by the story. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> my children are five years apart. They're, they're, it's, it's a big gap, which I didn't intend, but 
I did not feel ready to have a second child for yeah. a long time because just having the first was so, such a, no matter how prepared I thought I was, I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't prepared. I didn't feel good at it. And I, I wish they were closer together in some ways, but in, in other ways, having they got made like in the beginning, he was a caregiver for his little sister. Yeah. But now that they're both in, you know, school age, they fight a lot. Um, and I tell them like, you might, you might fight and be annoyed with each other right now, but when you are grown and you have a sibling, this is, it's, it is a gift to have somebody that close to you. It, it is. I mean, 51 weeks to the day, it's, it's kind of crazy. And, crazy. you know, I never want to repeat the last year of my life because it was just a lot harder than I imagined, but it's just so much fun. And like, I always try to visualize, you know, later in life, like having, having the Thanksgivings and the Christmases mm -hmm. and then the grandkids and, the, you know, all of it versus like, holy ass, like, ah, this, like the two in this them. moment, right. <laughs> You've expressed 72 emotions and it's only, you know, 730 in the morning. Like it, it's, you know, try to focus less on that and more on like, wow, these two get to go through life together. But I, it was funny because I was explaining to my one friend, I'm like, I just don't want her to be alone. Like when she has to put me in a home, I want her to go out for martinis with her brother after, you know, I, I just pictured yeah. them in life versus the pain, the right. sacrifices I was going to have to make and how painful it would be to have, you know, two in, in one year. Um, cause I'm a single mom too. I don't know if I said that piece, but I, I'm doing this all on my own. So it's That's crazy. And that is and we, huge. We love it. We, we've been so embraced with our family and our network and the school that they go to now, you know, it's just been, it's been a big blessing. Yeah. Do do you have any family nearby? I don't know. My family is all in California. So okay. they come out, which is great. I've had cousins come out. I have another one coming shortly. Um, which is really nice. And we've been back only once because of COVID, but it was a lovely trip, you know, eight full days of family and, and we're going back in June. So it's, yeah, yeah we make it work. Yeah. And, um, so your, your, your business had been established. It wasn't like you were starting the business with the no. baby. So, so did you have to take like, um, a sabbatical or some time away when you, the babies were really little? So initially, that was always, of course, the plan. You know, I would take maternity leave. But if, when you look into my story, I had had a couple of false starts. I had a baby that I was um, adopting that I had for two days, and then she was taken away. And I had a couple of other. So each one of those times, I had prepared my life in a way that I would have coverage. This mm -hmm. time, it just wasn't feasible. And I thought, OK, I'll just sort of work half mass. Um, mm -hmm. But COVID hit, and we're in the streaming media industry. so. Whoosh, like blew everything blew up at once. So I just did what I could. Like I literally strapped her into her little carrier and I would do my calls with her on my belly. She was a very quiet baby. So I could, you That's know, good. Zoom wasn't really, we always use Zoom, but the rest of the world wasn't using Zoom. So that was starting to come into play. And people were like, right. how are you? How do you have that baby? I'm like, she's amazing. Yeah. So, um, you know, I just made it work. I made it work. We have an incredible team um, and Allison, who you've talked to and Daniela. So they were able to, you know, fill in where I wasn't able to. And it would just, we made it work. Oh, that's great. That, that's great. I think a good thing about um, owning your own business is that you're, you, you can set your own deadlines a lot of the time and you can sort yeah. of say like, this is what I can do for today. Um, I have trouble with like, I get, I get, I get like, Oh no, I can't get all these things done. And then I realize, well, who's telling me I have to get all these things. Oh my God. Oh, yes. I, am. I decided that. Wait, I can undecide that, you yeah. know, the so self manager. It's horrible. Yesterday I had to totally manage myself. I'm like, God, I'm putting so much pressure. I'm like the worst boss. You know, when you have the worst boss, right. I'm like, I'm the worst boss because I'm putting all this pressure on like, oh, I should be doing this. I'm like, it's Sunday. You should be watching Disney movies with your kids. That's all you should be doing. And totally. yeah, and it's just so much pressure because there's always a million things to do yeah. with them. And yeah, but between the children and the business, the, and the business is like a child in that way. <laughs> like there's always things to do. There's growth. And then that means yeah. more things to do. And then something goes wrong and everything changes. Um, Let's explain to everybody a little bit about what your business is. Um, for people yeah. who don't really know at all about streaming media, or um, maybe they, they use it, but they don't know what, what it yeah. is, can you give a quick overview? 
Sure. So we, um, streaming is basically anything you're watching on TV. Like if you watch Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Channel, all of that is streaming. And so what our company does is we work with shows like Mom Cave that are fantastic, but maybe don't know how to get into that world. You know, they're mastering Facebook and YouTube and Insta and all of those places. But we take them and then bring them sort of like up into the world of smart TV. So we get them on Amazon Fire. We get them on Roku. We get them on Apple TV so that they can reach these whole new audiences. And why that's fun and important is that you know, all of you watching, if you're watching on Insta or Facebook, you already know about Mom Cave. But in those instances, they have maybe 40 million subscribers in the instance of Roku that don't. And so we put you in a new audience and they start to watch and discover and become a fan of Mom Cave. And so, yeah, so that's what we do. And we do it for you know, any creator, whether you have a food show, a travel show, a mom show, whatever the case may be. Um, those are our clients that we work with. Yeah, so then I'm going to make that my little announcement. Yay! Yay. Um, so <laughs> Mom Cave is now on over 100 smart TV platforms through Binge Networks. Yes. And um, yeah, so we, we've left the computer and the phone screen and we are coming to the TV screen and it's very exciting. Um, I wanted to, sh I can show. Oh, we have an Amazon Fire app. Yes, you no? do. Just yeah. launched last week. So yeah. hot off the press. Hot Amazon Fire off the press. Totally. And I haven't even gotten a chance to really explore the Amazon Fire app. Um, I was going to show, oops, I was going to show everybody so they can see what it all looks like. Well, let's see if we can. Okay. okay. So this is the Amazon Fire app. And this is what Mom Cave's channel looks like on Binge. So we have our series down here and um slowly adding more i was here let me make it stop showing the screen so you can see us now there we go i think we're back to us let us know um <laughs> I, so mom cave started out as a youtube channel with um me and two moms and a dad and we had a couple of parent humor web series that were going to film festivals and stuff and people said make it a channel so I always envisaged, envisaged, I can't talk, I'm tired, envisaged, envisioned, envisioned. whatever. <laughs> I imagined in my mind that Mom Cave would be um, a network of different shows for parents. And, um, but then, it, you know, like we were talking about before, life never goes the way you planned. So yes. the YouTube channel, it, it was, it was getting a lot of recognition in the industry of like professional people, but it was just kind of not growing as fast as I wanted. And then some little viral, little video I made about it, um, single moms actually went viral on Facebook. And that's how we got most of our um, fans on Facebook because moms were more on Facebook than YouTube at the time. And it just became more of an internet thing. So I'm very excited that now it's an internet thing and a TV thing. Um, and we have years and years of videos and we're always making new videos. So they're yeah. going to be on binge. Um, yeah. And I, I think, I don't know. I, I haven't really made like this big announcement. Usually on uh, Mom Cave, if something changes, like we do a blog post and all, but I couldn't really find out how to tell all of you people on the internet what <laughs> this is and how to access it. Um, so this is it. This is what we're telling you. Um, and Yay. through the lens of this amazing mom becoming a mom during the pandemic, <laughs> I, that that makes me very happy that that mom cave can be part of your company. Um, yeah, us too. We can understand each other. <laughs> um, <laughs> so does is binge on all the social media places? Can people find it? Is you? Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're more heavy on uh, smart TV. Obviously, you can find us on Roku, Amazon, um, Apple TV, but we are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, all under Binge Networks. So at Binge Networks. Yeah. Um, and you can find great content there, all of our content partners, um, or Binge Networks.tv. That's our streaming platform. So if you want to watch all the Mom Cave shows, you can head there and watch totally. us there too. Yeah, you can just go, you know, if you on, on your computer, just like you could go to Netflix, you can go to Binge Networks and watch it on your computer. 
um, in addition yeah. to all these other places. Or I'm very excited when, when I put the app on my iPhone, it felt very official. Um, so you can also <laughs> watch <laughs> on an app. Um, and there's a lot, you know, we're, we're the mom content, but there's all kinds of content on Binge. There's business content yes. and mindfulness and health. And I haven't even explored it all yet. It's a ton of great stuff. Um, Bonnie, I feel like, first of all, I said we're going to talk for 50 minutes and it's been 25. Um, okay. <laughs> your, I just, your story is so fascinating that I would love when you and I will have to talk when we're not online at some point about, I would love to hear more about your story and share it with everybody. Um, yes. Because the idea, you know, we have a lot of single mom followers and we have a lot of people who are running their own business and trying to survive it all with kids. So we would love to hear more. Um, Excellent. Yeah, thanks, thanks for talking to me today. Thank you for having yeah. me. Thanks, all mamas. I know it's. You're, I know you're all busy. I know that for sure. I so know. Thank you for tuning in. I'm sure a lot of you are watching this in the carpool line, as I do. Um, thank you so much, <laughs> and we'll be in touch more. Everybody, go check out Binge Networks and make sure to check out Mom Cave on Binge Networks and the Amazon Fire app, and all the places. Okay. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you.